Welcome to Dallas Ducks this week, number 14. We're live on location with the whole team at the Dells RV Ducks here in Lake Delta. So welcome everybody to our new project. And uh, first of all, we want to uh, say thank you to Mr. George Field for having us tonight Thanks, and uh, for being the primary sponsor of the team for the first three years. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure for us to sponsor the team. Uh, we appreciate the youth hockey in the area, and of course we want to support it. And the team being named Ducks uh, fit very well with our organization as well, since that's what we do, our duck rides. But we also have other boat rides too. We have a, other boat rides on the Upper Dells, and we also have a jet boat ride, and we also have a zip line as well, which is playing in the background. Yeah. And all, all of the team members did recently ride the zip line and had a great time. I saw that online. There was a lot of photos and videos and stuff like that. It looked like it was uh, quite an adventure. Some of them are pretty long, too. Uh, absolutely. The one of, longest one is about a quarter of a mile long. Oh my God. One of the requirements that we had of the guys was uh, for your complimentary ride was to give us some nice reviews on, <laughs> on your Facebook and, uh, and the other advice. I don't think you had to ask for that. No, uh, nevertheless it is. Now the Ducks, I was reading online today that the, the Ducks have been uh, in town. They were really the original attraction for, for this area, weren't they? Well, not quite true. I mean, people started coming to Wisconsin Dells to see the rock formations along the oh, Wisconsin yeah. River. And as far as the middle 1800s, and they used to row rowboats up and down to see oh, them. Neat. But when the railroad came in, that's when the steamships started to uh, uh, started to appear in town. And then after that, slowly uh, the tourism industry built and built, and then after World War II, my grandfather uh, found these, who was in the trucking business in Milwaukee, found these six by six boats out in California, drove one of them back to Milwaukee and stuck seats on them, and in 1946 brought them up here to the Wisconsin Dells and started giving tours to, his, uh, to, to people on the Wisconsin River. And it's kind of all just evolved from that almost 70 years ago. Yeah. But since then, we've also added other tours like the Jet Boat Ride, which is very popular, that's playing in the background right now. Additionally, but like we just talked about the zip line as well. And when uh, my friend uh, Aaron Kirby, who is the rink manager, right. asked uh, us if we'd like to sponsor the team when the Ducks came to Lake Dalton here in uh, 2010, yeah. possibly 2010. Of course, we wanted to participate and sponsor the team, especially since their name is Ducks, and that's what we do. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, I, I like the fact that the, the, the Ducks are, are like a, a great way to see the scenery in town, and this is like the modern version of the boat stuff. People are in a little bit more of a hurry, and then that's like the modern way of seeing things nowadays, I guess. Absolutely. People <laughs> used to come to Wisconsin Dells, and they'd spend a week or two, a week or ten days here, and right. get a place with a cabin and on a lake and spend quite a bit of time. But as uh, people's lives got more complicated and hurried, uh, people are here more for a weekend vacation and kid, children's attention spans are uh, uh, diminished a little bit in, the, in recent years and uh, they do want things that are exciting, which is why we added the zip line and the jet boat ride. Awesome. Now, you've mentioned Aaron Kirby, uh, yes, you obviously are great friends, and uh, the connection to hockey goes way back. You played hockey together as youngsters. A little bit different in those days, wasn't it? You played uh, a different sort of uh, arena, I think. Yeah, I still play adult hockey on Wednesday nights. Oh, and awesome. I play with 20-year-olds who all grew up on indoor ice. The <laughs> Poppy Waterman Arena went in about uh, 1998 or 9, something like that. And uh, Aaron and I uh, played hockey on the old rink, which was outdoor ice. And uh, that was some... Uh, that was a little different hockey, obviously, because we didn't have as many games, we didn't have as much opportunity to practice. So, uh, as a result, you know, the kids that I play with at 20 years old are much better skaters. But nevertheless, yes, Aaron and I played hockey in high school. He was in my brother's class, which was only a couple of years younger. And we've remained friends ever since. And uh, like I said, when he asked to sponsor the team, of course, we wanted to support them. Yeah, we are so thankful to have the Ducks. Ducks is our primary sponsor, and uh, I thank you, George, for this. And uh, we'll to see you at the rink and uh, maybe oh. drop a puck somewhere over the course of the season. Oh, that'd be nice. Thank you okay, very thank much, you. Jeff. Thank you. Let's thank hear you. for George Field. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, now the second part of our new Bangled show is our uh, game show. Tonight we have the goaltenders against 
Uh, defense one. There's two defense teams. Tonight we have the goaltenders against D1. And included on the goaltending team is Robbie Meadows, uh, 93 from Shelby Township, Michigan. Mike Ambrose, a 94 from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And Adam Flipper Filippiak, a 96 from Warrenville, Illinois. Yeah. All right. so defense, we have the Ducks' lone original player, Johnny Schwartz, a 94, playing his fourth year at junior hockey, third with the Ducks, a Wooddale, Illinois native. And the team's only import this year, so far, uh, Johannes Leitner, Yo-Yo, is from Vienna, Austria, and a 95. And we also have Jeremy Cesare from Huntley, Illinois, uh, a 95, who last year played for the Dundee Leafs. So we'll learn a little bit more about these players uh, coming up, but first of all, we're going to have a little bit of a, of a the game show's going to start with uh, how well do you know your teammate? And we're going to start with uh, Johnny and Robbie filled out uh, some cards earlier, and your teammates are going to have to guess your answers. So we're going to start, we'll start with the goalies. Uh, Mike, what do you think Robbie's favorite NHL team is? Flipper? Two points for the goalies. Okay. <laughs> now, for the, uh, for the defense, the goal, Johannes, uh, what do you think uh, Johnny's favorite NHL team is? Chicago Blackhawks. Black <laughs> that was kind of an easy one, wasn't it? <laughs> okay, two points apiece. <laughs> now we're going to move on to favorite NHL player, Mike? Right? John Sebastian. Flipper? Ron Hextall. Ron Hextall, yeah, that goes back. Oh. Jim Thomas. Oh, oh, no yeah. points for the goalies. Yeah. Yo, yo, any idea what uh, Johnny's favorite NHL player is? It's your number five, I'm guessing it's Lidstrom. Lidstrom? Yeah, we'll go with Lidstrom. We'll okay. That. Jonathan Tate. No oh, points for the D. So still the even. Two points for the D. It might get a little bit tougher now. We'll start with the D this time. Yo, yo, I need you to tell me what Johnny's favorite musical artist or group is. <laughs> Justin Bieber. <laughs> Close. No. Jeremy? Yeah, we'll go with Justin Bieber. Both are saying Bieber. Katy Perry. Katy Perry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay Holy, same question. Flipper, any idea? Taylor Swift. <laughs> Mike? Definitely some fun, man. I take a shot there at AC. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm thinking these guys don't know their teammates very well. Okay, we're going to go back to the defense again. Jeremy, can you tell me what uh, Johnny's favorite pregame meal is? Pasta. Uh, I think you have to be a little bit more specific. Spaghetti and meatballs. Okay, Yo-Yo? Okay. Done? Chicken Alfredo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for the goalie, Mike, any idea? Uh, I'm going to say watermilk pancakes with boysenberry syrup. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty detailed. Yeah. <laughs> Goaltenders who have the lead right now. Which one did uh, your goaltender pick? Star Trek or Star Wars? Easy Star Wars. Star Wars. Five points for the goalies. Star Wars. Star Wars. Okay, so we're heading to the uh, second round. 
goalies are leading the defense five points to four. So let's hear it for the goalies so far. Okay, for this part now you're gonna to have to use your uh, your buzzers, which are Dell stuff calls. So if you have to ready, I don't think you can have it in your mouth, you have to have it down. Yeah, yeah, hand on it. You won't be able to tell it. Another hand on it? That's fine. Okay. <laughs> you won't allow it. <laughs> okay, first question. Which of the following league teams does not feature a bird in its nickname? Dells, Ileana, Edina, or Rochester? Johnny. Johnny. Edina. Oh, Correct. And now we're tied five to three. Okay, this one's worth two points. Two Dallas Duck players have two things in common. First, they're tied for third place overall in league scoring, along with Kendall Bull and Porter of Maple Grove, and they also share the first name. Mike. Ian Wood. Correct. Oh. 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 Only two in front, seven to five. Oh. This is another one point question. What is the name of the Dell's Duck mascot? Johnny. Johnny. Dangles a duck. Correct. <laughs> seven six. Another one point question. An effective way of killing a penalty in your own end. This is also <laughs> said to be a girl's best friend. Mike. Diamond. Correct. Wow. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. That's eight to six. It all comes down to this final question, which is a who am I? If you get it on the first clue, you get five points. If you get it on the second clue, you get three points. Third clue is two points, and fourth clue is one point, okay? So here's your first clue. I was born on April 18th, 1982, and obviously became a Bruins fan. Paul. Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, Coach Bill. Correct. So, five oh, 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 so, so, first round of the yeah. Dallas Duck competition goes to the defense with 11 points to 8 points. So let's hear for the defense one team. <laughs> now we'll go to the normal part of our weekly show with uh, Coach Zanaboni and Coach Haybison. George, what's next? Yeah, that's great. Okay. Okay. Let's first of all, we uh, we have one coach that's a goalie and one coach that's a defense. So I'm thinking I know who you guys were cheering for in that uh, game show. There. Am I right? Uh, you know what? It's just nice to to see if guys understand each other very much. And, uh, I think we learned a lot about the guys tonight. Yeah. Maybe so. not so good. Yeah. Next week's uh, should be interesting. Um, we're going to have a little bit of a brother-brother competition next week. Uh, we're going to have the forward line of Ian Wood along with Big Hef and Danny Rowe. They're going to be going up against the other defense unit of Stima, Jake Stima, Mike Sully Sullivan, and a little half, so that should be an interesting competition next week. Yeah, there might be some blood in that one with the brothers. <laughs> yeah. <that's for> sure. <laughs> might have to uh, get a little bit. Uh, might have to bring in some. Might security. have to bring a ref in for that one. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about the team so far. Obviously, at six and all, um, you have to be pretty happy. You went to uh, Maple Grove, running a four a four game winning streak, but you're facing a team that had four wins, and. Uh, you knew that it was a tough ring to play in, so uh, you knew you were going to be a pretty tough team. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we knew, um, you know, they're built to play on that ice sheet, which is the Olympic sheet. Mm -hmm. um, so it's stuff that we talked about uh, a week prior, you know, to, to heading up to make Maple Grove. Right. 
you know what they uh, we were very unsuccessful there last year as a group and, and it's something that you know we wanted to change uh, as a staff and you know we, we put some time in and we had the guys put some time in and do some homework and, and come up with uh, a game plan to you know to be successful. Okay. Jake, uh, defensively, um, this team's identity. I mean, all over, but really on defense. This team's identity is to play a close checking, real physical style. And if you give a team more room to move, they can maybe get around the checks a little bit. Um, playing on the big ice, was there any difference in strategy or anything like that? Not really difference in strategy. It's more so just making sure everything that they're doing is perfect to the T. Like making sure the defense are staying within the dots, forcing guys to the outside, okay. uh, closing gaps on the blue line if you can making sure you know where your guy is in the slot because the zone is so much bigger. There's a lot more room for guys to just kind of float around, float around and get lost. Yeah, right. Uh, just kind of, everything is just kind of focused in. Now both teams really have a knack for those big long outlet passes. It really was kind of an interesting game on big ice because uh, it seems smaller with the, with the big passes. Well, yeah, I mean, that's stuff that we talked about. You know, sometimes we had to go east and west to get north, but, um, you know, especially on changes in the second period where teams have long changes and, and they were playing, you know, in the last game it was their four and four. So, I mean, um, you know, we knew, we thought we could stretch them out a little bit. Uh, they were going to be a little bit maybe uh, mentally tired uh, and, and forget about some guys. So we try to take advantage of that. So. Okay. First game, it was really wide open going into the third. I think it was 1-1. Yep. Um, the game was up for grabs and the team really dug down to get the, uh, the two goals that they were both by Ian Harris. Yep. Um, and uh, I think the first one you kind of got behind their defense and then that's the side one that you to your team at. But uh, coming up big when you have to, that's that's just what uh, what wins games, I think, a lot now to this Yeah, you know, the biggest thing was is the, the game winner was actually a short-handed goal by Ian. Oh, that's right too, um, yeah. So, you know, he blocked the shot and then went down and finished it. And, you know, the shift before that, and Jimmy Buckingham blocked the shot and got balled down for a penalty shot. So, I mean, you know, we were going. Uh, you know, the guys understood that the two points are on the line, and, and they're big early in the season. You know, these are the points that you don't want to look back on and, and say, you know, we wish we would have dug a little deeper, and, you know, and finished that play off, or, you know, I wish I, you know, I would have read my coverage better. So, and so we're really trying to pay attention to the details of their guys, and, and uh, you know, they're doing a good job. They're putting in effort, you know, every day at the gym. and and on the ice and uh, you know hard work kind of paying off right now. So. Okay. Now they were riding a bit of momentum coming into the game. They had a win the night before against Hudson. Uh, later on in the weekend when you played them on Sunday, you expected to be playing a tired team. They had played three games in three nights. You had a night off and enjoyed you know, some, uh, some relaxation up in the Twin Cities. That's a game where maybe there was a little bit more pressure on your team because more was expected. You were playing a tired team. You were expected to dominate. And he did. So that's what they really did what they were supposed to do, I think. Yeah, you know what, that's a good hockey club, man. It's a really good hockey club. Um, you know, they have a lot of veteran leadership back there and, and some guys that are very dangerous um, in, in our zone. So, you know, it was something that we knew we had to take advantage of. Um, and sometimes a day off can hurt you and sometimes it can help you. And I think our guys use it the right way. You know, we, we had a team meal at uh, Jimmy Buckham's house. And, right. You know, we kept everyone together. And, you know, kind of on the same page where instead of letting guys go off and do their own stuff, you know, we try to stay together, have some fun, um, but still under, you know, understand the task at hand. I mean, we talked about it uh, all day on the day off when we knew they were playing, um, you know, and they kept they had a big win that night up in Ice Santee, three or four nothing. Um, so, you know, they, they did have some jam coming in to Sunday and they showed it. I mean, they came out, I thought, played really hard. You know, our job was to try to wear them down on the road and, and win the game late if we had to, and, and our offense really stepped up on something. Yeah, I thought that's was uh, that's really what what was sort of expected, and that's what really happened. Um, now going into this week, uh, you, you have a weekend off, so you basically have two weeks without a game. Um, what kind does it change your schedule at all? I mean, is there going to be a few days off, or do you have to kind of stay sharp uh, for two weeks? Oh, well, we're I mean we're going to stay sharp, but we get you know. Anytime I think you can get the guys away for a couple of days and, and re-energize their batteries and stuff like that, it's important. So, you know, we're going to give them a couple of days off and we'll, head, we'll get back at it on Monday and, you know, start preparing. I mean, you know, now we got them on a smaller ice, so things have to change a little bit. Um, you know, there's not going to be a, a, a lot of time to, to read and react. It's almost just react. So, uh, 
Um, you know, that's stuff that we got to address with our guys. We will. And our guys are right now, they've been doing a real good job of attention to detail when we start talking to them and, and getting the chalk talk on this. Now, anybody who makes any bold predictions at the two week mark was usually using this one, uh, looking pretty soon. But uh, is there anything like, I mean, is everything pretty much on the way you thought it would? Like, when you look around the entire league, has there been any surprises to you guys at all? Or uh, is everything pretty much gone the way you expected it? Um, I think uh, everybody, I mean, from what we saw at the showcase, um, I haven't seen the Northern Lights play, but um, all I heard going into it was kind of that they were a little shorthanded. Um, you know, they took care of business. I think I think they're still undefeated right now, playing with a, a short roster. They're doing really well, so I think that was uh, that was kind of a surprise to me. And at the other end, uh, Steel County and all, I mean, they, they seem like they're a lot better team than all six right now. Yeah, no, I think they are. Uh, I think, you know, they're really young. And, uh, you know, it's going to take some time. And, and John's a great coach over there, and he'll get things uh, in order. But, uh, you know, he's, he's definitely throwing a lot of new faces into the junior game right now. And sometimes that takes some time, so you get some growing pains. But uh, it'll pay off for them. You know, he's a hardworking coach, and it's a good organization over there. Okay. Um, when, you, when you don't play a division all season, Great you play some four times, you won't seem to get to the uh, Do you pay attention to that side as well, or do you, or do you just sort of, just every once in a while, check out the standings kind of thing? No, I think, you know, we pay attention a lot to everything that's going on. I mean, that's our job. Um, you know, we take pride in, in everything that we do, and that's a message we try to send to our players. So, um, you know, it's kind of lead by example. I mean, we try to make sure they understand what's going on in the other division, and who's doing what, and the player's doing what, and, um, we try to keep them aware and we want them on our toes because, you know, that's something that, that's a place where we want to be at the end of the year, you know, is, is playing a Great Lakes team. Right. So. Yeah, and that's one of the things we talked about a lot, the park is set so high, and you can tell, like, I think even in these games early, that the expectations are high from the coaches and from the players. I mean, they, you know, a win is a win, but the, it's a little bit different this year. Well, I think right now, you know, it's a win's a win, and it's always great to get your two yeah, points. Right. But you, it's you're still teaching, you know. It's so early where you know little mistakes are being made, and you know if that mistake gets made in, in two months from now, the other team is, is making me pay for it. So that's where we're trying to, I guess, you know, Jake and myself trying to jump the gun and and stop, you know, the, the little mistakes that uh, could stay with guys. We're trying to stop them right now, you know, so we can keep implementing new systems and, and new jobs to do. Um, we will be back next week. We're not sure of the location yet. It's still TBA, I believe. We will probably move around a, a fair bit, but we're going to try to stay on the road and we're going to keep the game show going. And uh, I don't know, I think this is kind of fun to get everybody involved with, uh, with this show. Everybody. No, it's great. And you know, we definitely want to thank George and, oh, and the sure. Dells Army Ducks for letting us come in and uh, you know everything that they do in the community. All right, so we'll see you next week. Uh, the Ducks will be in action uh, next weekend, uh, the f October 4th, 5th, and 6th. The Booster Club will be set up with uh, some new items, including cowbells, which we uh, received today. So get your cowbells, and uh, there will be a lot of uh, souvenir-type items and things like that. And the Ducks will be playing the same team. We'll talk a little bit more about that next week. Uh, the Maple Grove Energy will be back. and. Um, We'll see you next week. Thank you.